A number of you, uh, if you've been to our website, by the way, if you uh, cursor across that logo at the top on the front of the website, it does change and uh, there are no prizes, but uh, you can come back and tell us what, what the animation means if you do that. Okay, next slide, please. So Kate and I um, founded uh, the, the charity, uh, 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 the foundation in 2018, it's really to explore and uh, facilitate the exploration of quantum biology and what role it might play in advancing medicine. And we're approaching all of this from a life sciences background. I've had 40 years of research in, in researching new medicines. Um, and in that, we're going to, we want to embrace explorative theories and uh, laboratory research in quantum mechanics and bioenergetics and try and understand their role in disease. Over time, wonder whether this might translate into a deeper understanding that might advance medical practice. Um, so the aim of the foundation at present, the aim is to act as a focal point for quantum biology research. Next slide, please. Um, so why quantum biology? Well, I'm told by our physicist colleagues that the, the quantum mechanics and quantum principles existed in the universe way before life on Earth. And it seems reasonable to me that uh, as life started, it may well have embraced or in, indeed enabled certain quantum uh, events uh, to occur in, bio, in, 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 in promoting life and bringing it forwards. Um, so the theories that, that, that uh, may arise from study quantum biology may give us a better understanding of the origin of life. And as you know, in medicine, we, we tend to go back quite far to the origins of life to try and understand what's going wrong in illness and disease. We may uh, be able to understand a little bit more about consciousness, uh, and of course, the very, very uh, real topic in medicine today of aging and disease. And then, of course, maybe some sort of grand unifying theory if we were to link the above. Um, and there is this thought that perhaps biology as such is a sort of the optimal expression of the quantum world. Um, so this is really approaching these quantum uh, principles from a life science and biological uh, direction. It's turning the, uh, the telescope round, so to speak. Uh, next slide. Uh, so why don't we just stick with the conventional approach? Uh, you know, I've worked, a uh, number of us have worked in life science for decades now, and what's wrong with the current approach? Nothing wrong with the current approach, but there are holes in our understanding. Um, uh, for example, you know, why has, is the modern lifestyle conferring so much illness, and especially in this COVID uh, pandemic, uh, those that uh, have, have a poor modern lifestyle seem to be more, more vulnerable. Why do we age and what is the process of aging? There are some organisms that simply don't age, and uh, what's the secret in their uh, in their uh, existence? Um, again, the pharmaceutical industry and modern medicine has produced a significant uh, a number of very very good drugs, but the risk benefit equation still doesn't really favour efficacy over risk. And 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 the I felt over the last four or five decades uh, we may have been able to direct some of our research more effectively to drugs with a better risk benefit equation had we applied other, other principles to our thinking. Uh, and then there are issues about you know, what is the real purchase of, of, uh, purpose of a gene? What is consciousness? We've already funded some research with, uh, with Michael Levine looking at electromagnetic fields and, it, and their impact on morphology. Are these fields morphogenic? Again, modern medicines and modern pharmacology relies almost entirely on chemical, uh, on the action of chemicals on receptors or our targets and doesn't, uh, and therapeutics don't really think a lot about things like electromagnetic fields. We'd also want to know how, whether there's, how, okay. All right. Um, and the last little question is, um, is my own question is how did life start? And at what point did life adopt biology to aid its evolution? So this is really turning the, uh, turn the, tele the telescope around entirely. I'm not sure whether that's a reasonably valid question, but it's something that uh, would be interesting to think about moving forwards. So uh, some of these issues may well be addressed from, uh, from our understanding of the quantum world, but we accept quite fully as a foundation that they may not be over time. Next slide. Uh, so our path here came from sort of the more conventional area of, of uh, life science research. And, it's true to say that, uh, that uh, uh, a lot of life science research, and especially through the modes of 
the, how a grant's given is incremental and stays in a comfort zone. And this is very much the case with grant give it, giving bodies. And in medicine, especially if something falls outside that conventional comfort zone, at best it's ignored, but actually at worst, it's actively discouraged and frowned upon. And there are many examples of that over the last one to two, 200 years. Um, we're not afraid to think outside the box, and we've got a proven track record in our own backgrounds in life science of doing that. And those last two um, uh, bullet points there basically say, as a foundation, we're prepared to fund projects that probably other people would not fund. And that's the sort of discussion that we've had with quite a lot of you over, over the last few months and over the last year, is uh, trying to get projects funded where the normal conventional grant giving bodies don't really uh, warm to, to, the, to the science. Okay, moving on from there. Next slide, thanks. So our, fam, our foundation, the Guy Foundation is a family trust and we sort of want to try and think, Kate and I want to try and think of the faculty as a sort of a large extended family, but right at the heart of, uh, of the foundation as we've started it, our team and advisors really come from a very diverse and eclectic set of disciplines. And this is exactly one of the roles of foundations bring people together and between the the core group we've got a reasonable body of uh, of peer-reviewed articles and, uh, and and publications covering uh, you know the bullet points you see here and m many of these are going to be very interesting i think to a lot of you on on the on the, on the call today um, next one please but there are challenges. I think many of you working in this area of quantum uh, biology will understand that. Uh, I think it's important that we can generate uh, more and uh, more hypotheses that perhaps are more readily uh, available and acceptable to uh, life scientists or life science scientists. Uh, and then with those hypotheses, we need to increase the amount of experimentation uh, to bridge that gap between physics and bi biology. And if those findings are of any value to us, we see whether they're, they're applicable to enhance, enhance medicine. But all the while through this, one of the roles that we see the foundation doing is to try and increase acceptance of these, of these notions. Um, acceptance that has been readily given to things like lasers, MRI, computers, but not the sort of Cinderella science of, of quantum biology. And many of the quantum notions and, and ideas and, and things we're discussing actually have, have, have been around for nearly a hundred years now. And I, and I think it's about time that we could bring some of these into the mainstream. And if we can bring them into the mainstream by achieving a critical mass in the research, then this should be a, a significant catalyst to unlock new funding sources. So not just funding from people like the foundation and other people that are funding in this area at the moment, but the more traditional, more conventional funding sources, if they could recognize this uh, area of science in the mainstream. Moving on, the last one. So, so from our aim, which was to be a focal point, uh, one of the goals is to facilitate the construction of a quantum biology jigsaw and its acceptance as a means to enhance medicine. And in this Lotus, leaf uh, uh, Venn diagram here, we've put a number of these areas which, in which we have direct uh, interest and our group and our advisors uh, have, have been involved in research in these areas. We want to bring these together and see whether a conduit uh, of these comes through quantum science to, to benefit medicine. And so that's our main objective, our main goal is to bring these notions together to benefit medicine. So that's, I'll close there. Um, I'm happy to take questions right at the end of the session today. Uh, not, not right at the moment. Uh, the contacts, all of you know, if you need to have any contact with, with, with our foundation, then Nina uh, is our first direct point of contact.